Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this video, we're going to look at variable types in Kotlin. And by the way, I've switched to a light theme here. If you go to preferences, appearance and behavior and appearance, you can select your theme there. And a couple of people have suggested that light themes might be more visible. Do let me know what you think about that in the comments. So we've seen that you can use the var keyword to declare mutable variables in Kotlin. Let's create a variable which I'll call value one, and we'll set that equal to seven. And as we've seen, you can print that out with print line if you want. If I didn't have this line here, that would already be a valid program, but we wouldn't see any output without the print line. So if I run that, we get seven appearing on the console. Now, because I used var to declare this variable, I can change the value of it. So I can say value one equals, for example, two, and we can print that. So value one did have the value of seven when we printed it here, but the compiler is going to work through my code from top to bottom within the main function. So when it reaches here, the value of value one changes to two, and then we print value one again, and by then it's two. Now what I can't do is I can't change it to, for example, 2.1. And why is that? Well, Kotlin is a strongly typed language, and that means that all variables in Kotlin have a type, which we could also refer to as their class. Let's take a look at the type of the value one variable here. To do that, I'm going to use print line again, and I'm going to print value one, double colon, class, and then dot simple name. So this obtains the class, which for our purposes here is basically synonymous with type. It obtains the class or type of the variable and then it gets the name of the variables class. And if we run this program, we can see that the type of the value one variable is int. Int is short for integer, which means a whole number. So what's happened here is that the compiler has looked at my variable and it said, okay, you're initializing it with the value seven. Seven is an integer, it's a whole number. Therefore, I'm going to set the type of this variable to int, and we can make this variable refer to other integers later, other whole numbers, whether negative or positive, but we can't, for example, make it refer to a floating point number like this. So this just does not work. Now, since this doesn't work, I'm going to comment it out. Anything that you put on a line after a double slash in Kotlin is a comment, and it won't affect my program. It's purely something for you to look at. So I'm going to comment out these two lines, which I'm not going to use because this doesn't work. Now we can use this technique not only to get the types of variables, but also to get the types of literals, values that I've typed into my code. So this is a numeric literal. It's a number that's been literally typed into my program. And if we do print line seven colon colon class dot simple name, we can see that seven is also of the type int. We're getting int coming out down here from this. Whereas if I duplicate that, which is command D on the Mac, it's gonna be different on Windows. And I try for example, 1.2, we can see that the type of this numeric literal is double. And that's why we can't assign this value to this variable because this variable is of type int and this numeric literal is of type double. We can't assign a double value to a variable of an integer type. And again, if you're completely new to programming and this seems confusing, I don't recommend stressing about it or even making notes. I just do recommend typing out everything that you're gonna see in this video and trying it out for yourself. You'll learn way more by doing that than you perhaps even realize. Now I'm gonna show you something, which if you're coming to this from another programming language like Java, you might think would work, but in fact also doesn't work. Let's create a variable here called value two, and I'm gonna assign that a floating point value like 2.3. So what's the type of this variable? Well, Kotlin has a bunch of different types for integers and it has two different types for floating point values. And we're gonna look at them briefly later on. But by default, a numeric floating point literal like this is gonna be considered, as we've seen, to be of the double type. 
So this variable will have the type double. Let's print out its type down here. Let's do print line value two colon colon class dot simple name. And we can see that now we've got a variable of type double. So you might think you could do this value two equals, for example, six. And the reason you might think that is because six can easily be interpreted as 6.0, which is a double value. So we can assign a double value like this to a variable of double type. Why can't Kotlin just realize that I mean 6.0 here and assign it as the new value of this variable, value two? And the answer is, well, Kotlin just doesn't do that. When you assign a value to a variable, that value really has to match exactly the type of the variable. So the type of the value that you're assigning has to match the type of the variable. What I could do here is assign, for example, 6.8 or whatever floating point value I like, and that will work just fine. Now, when you create variables, you can actually specify the type explicitly. So this variable ended up being of type int because I assigned an int value to it, an integer, but we could explicitly write here after a colon, and we don't want any space there, int. And that fixes the variable type to int right here where I declare it, whether you immediately assign a value to it or not. Similarly, I could state that this variable is going to be of type double, which we commonly use for floating point values. And that will fix the type of this variable right here where I declare it, whether we assign a value to it or not. So the bottom line is variables have types you can only assign values to them of the same type as that variable. And the type that's most commonly used for representing whole numbers, whether positive or negative, is int, short for integer. The type that's most commonly used for representing floating point values, whether positive or negative, is double. And that's called double basically for historical reasons. It's short for double precision. Let's take a look at a couple of other really important types in Kotlin. And then I'm going to go really quickly just through all the basic single value types in Kotlin. So we've also seen string. We can create string variables. Let's say var, I'll call this text one equals, and in double quotes, I'm just going to put some text, whatever I like really, which can even include spaces as long as it's between the double quotes. And we can print that as we've seen previously. And we can also find out what type this is. Let's say here, print ln text one colon colon class dot simple name. And if we run this, we find out that what text one is, is a variable of type string. So you can see the text at the end of the output of the program in my console here. We've got string, which is coming from here and we've got hello, which is coming from here. So again, if we wanted, we could explicitly fix the type of the variable when we declare it by typing colon string immediately after the variable name. And we can't use this text one variable to refer to numbers of any sort from now on. The only thing we can use it to refer to is other strings because that's its type. So I could change it here, for example. I could say text one equals hi, and that will be absolutely fine. And then when we run this, down here it says hi. The other important type that I want to show you here is the char type. So if I write var, let's call this letter, equals, and I'm gonna use single quotes now. So a string always has to be in double quotes. But if I use single quotes, I can put a single character in there, for example, f or whatever I like. This is a Unicode character, so it can be any one of a very wide range of characters. And I can print that as with other types of variable. And I can also print its type. So let's just duplicate that and then also output colon colon class dot simple name. And we find that the type of this variable is in fact char. So again, I could explicitly say that if I want to, I don't have to, but I could explicitly say that this is of the type char. Notice Kotlin is case sensitive, so I can't put char there. 
I have to put char with a capital C. That's really important. So this variable can only be used to refer to characters, which you have to enclose in single quotes. It can only be used to refer to a single letter at a time, basically. But not just a letter, because other things are characters as well. For example, new line characters, which create a new line in your output, or digits, which represent numbers. Basically, this variable can refer to any single character. Now, I'm just going to do a kind of whistle-stop tour of the different types in Kotlin. We won't dwell on this. You can try out other types if you like, but the ones I've shown you are the most important of the basic types. That's int, double, string, and char. They're the most important types, I would say, in Kotlin. But there are a bunch of other types. So we can create a multi-line comment in Kotlin by typing slash star, and then we finish the comment with star slash. Anything I type between these symbols will be regarded as a comment. So for the integer types in Kotlin, these are basically whole numbers. In order of size, we've got byte, short, int, and long. So a byte is eight bits which means you can only store numbers in it from minus 128 to plus 127. The maximum number you can store in a byte type of variable is actually 2 to the power of 7 minus 1. But don't worry about that too much. I'm just kind of going over this for the sake of completeness. A short is 16 bits. So that means the maximum value you can store in it is 2 to the power of 15 minus 1, and the minimum value you can store in it is minus 2 to the power of 15. An int is 32 bits. You can store values up to 2 to the power of 31 minus 1, or down to minus 2 to the power of 31. And finally, a long is an integer type which takes up 64 bits in a computer's memory. So you can store minus 2 to the power of 63, up to 2 to the power of 63 minus 1. But there's no real need to memorize this at this stage. If you're new to programming, I wouldn't say. Now, for each of these types, there's also an unsigned type, which can only store positive numbers. So there's also u byte, u stands for unsigned, u short, u int, and u long. For floating point numbers, numbers with a decimal point in them, we've got double, which we've already seen. That's a 64-bit type. And we've got float, which we haven't seen, and that's a 32-bit type. So with a double, you can basically store something like 15 to 17 significant digits. If you try using a double to store a floating point value with more digits in it than that, then it's not going to correctly store all your digits. And with float, you, you basically get something like around about six significant digits. And both of these are sign types. They can be negative and positive. And we've also seen char and string, of course. Now, there are a couple of little gotchas that I want to mention right here. Let's make this a little bit smaller. So if you create a variable of an unsigned type, let's say val value three, and I'm going to make that of the type u int and try to set that to some value, which now has to be positive, remember, because unsigned types, the point of them is they only store positive values, but they can store values that are twice as big, potentially, as signed types, which have to also potentially deal with negative values. You can see I get an error here, and that's because this numeric literal here, this numeric value that I've literally typed into my code, we have to say that this is of an unsigned type by adding a capital or lowercase u after it. Let's make that capital. Similarly, if you create a value, which I'll call value four, and you assign it to the float type, let's try this. Now we have to say that the numeric literal is of the float type by adding an f to it, upper or lowercase. And finally, if we create a long type, so a variable of a long type like this, it's not necessary, but we can add a capital L on the end of it to ensure that this 
numeric literal is of type long. In this case though, it does actually work without the L. You can't use a lowercase L, which you can in some languages, but you can't here because it's too confusing. It looks like a one, so you're not allowed to use it. And you can combine U with L. So if you've got an unsigned long, you can write UL right here. Now, if you're new to this, I don't suggest you stress about this or make notes or try to memorize any of this or any of that. All I would suggest is that you type all of this out and verify for yourself that indeed you can't assign a floating point number to a variable of an integer type, for example. Just try it out. And by the way, I've created a GitHub repository for this course so if you want to take a look at the code for this video, if you go to github.com slash caveofprogramming slash Kotlin, you'll get to the repository I've created for the code for this course. So for example, if you want to take a look at the code for the last video, click on that, go into the source folder and the code's right there. So that's at github.com slash caveofprogramming slash Kotlin. Okay, that's it for this video. If you're a new programming, I appreciate that this isn't very exciting, but it is a, a really important thing to at least know about and practice a little bit before we go on to looking at more exciting stuff like how to make your programs interactive and how to use loops and all that kind of thing. So until next time, happy coding.